you know what time it is. Football season, Q4. Time to close out another year of growth and prep for the next year of revenue. To bring in more businesses Q4 and beyond, you need HubSpot Sales Hub. With a smart prospecting workspace, deal management suite, and AI-powered apps, you can take total control of your operation to generate more leads and land more sales. And when you pair a sales hub with other hubs in HubSpot Smart CRM, your team will be on the same page across the entire customer journey. Leads won't slip through the cracks, and data is connected across marketing, sales, and operations, so you can better measure your impact on the bottom line. Stop sticking to the same old strategies and start closing more deals, because the best time to score is Q4. Make the switch to HubSpot Sales Hub at HubSpot.com slash sales. Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, June 14th. I'm Mark Dent here with Jacob Cohen, and you're listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're going to talk about the marriage of Silicon Valley and the spice aisle. That's right. There is a little bit of AI influence on your sandwich, your burrito, your eggs, your barbecued chicken. And that's because McCormick is pretty into big tech. But before we start talking about all of that, let's just run through what's happening in the world of business and tech. First off, there's good news for people who don't like high prices. The consumer price index, which is a proxy for inflation, rose 4% year over year in May. Now that's still high and still not great, but it's the lowest level we've seen in the United States since March, 2021. And it's about half of the year over year inflation rate that we saw last June. So energy prices were a big reason for this decline in inflation. Gasoline prices dropped nearly 6% from April to May, but there's also bad news. Grocery prices continue to rise nationwide. Food is one of the biggest reasons why we're still seeing inflation go up. Ice cream costs, for instance, they went up 8%. Another factor we're seeing in this continued inflation is used car prices. They were up 4.4%. So things are still going up, and we'll see what the Fed will do in terms of interest rates when it meets coming up this month. So moving on, rest in peace to giving presentations? Maybe so. AI startup Synesthesia, whose software turns text into videos of realistic human avatars that can give presentations in 120 languages, just notched a $1 billion valuation. Speaking of billions and bills, Oracle founder Larry Ellison has now moved up to fourth place on the Bloomberg Billionaires Index. His net worth is $129.8 billion, and he passed Bill Gates's $129.1 billion. Moving on to your kitchen, there's some financial problems happening in the leftover space. The parent company for Instant Pot and Pyrex filed for bankruptcy this week, and Tupperware faces a potential delisting. Finally, Toyota's next electronic vehicles due in 2026 will have a range of approximately 621 miles, thanks to new batteries and sonic tech. So what that means is if you're traveling from New York, you could get almost all the way to Charlotte, North Carolina without a charge. Most electric vehicles these days currently offer 350 or so miles, meaning that if you were traveling from New York, you could barely get to Richmond, Virginia. All right, let's talk our main story. Surely you've heard of artificial flavoring, but have you heard of artificial intelligence in the food aisle? It turns out that big tech has been playing a big role in the spice aisle for the last few years, specifically with the brand McCormick, which is known for, among other things, being the company that owns French's, Frank's Red Hot, Cholula, and many other spices and sauces. So, Jacob, What's going on here? Like, why is McCormick acting like a tech company? Yeah, it is interesting. And I was just thinking before we sat down here, we're also caught up in big tech. Yes, we always uh, are. Chat GPT, <laughs> media, and other aisles of innovation. And sometimes we just forget to take a stroll down the seasoning aisle, you know? Yeah. But there are truly some giants and increasingly giants of tech in that aisle and in the condiment aisle too, in the soda aisle. And despite the products that they're putting on shelves, their tech department is really not too shabby. So as you said, one of those giants is McCormick. Quick backstory on the company. It started in 1889 Hmm. 
when the founder started basically bottling spices in his Baltimore basement. Sounds like that'd be illegal today. <laughs> you would, yes, <laughs> it know. probably would be. <laughs> uh, in classic entrepreneurship storytelling fashion, let's just skip the next like 120 right. years. Fast forward to 2022, the McCormick and Company made $6.35 billion in sales. And as Ben wrote in the newsletter, that's when you cue Lee Greenwood's God Bless the USA. Wow, so $6.35 billion in sales. Yes, it's pretty crazy. A striking thing about this company, other than the Spices signature red caps, uh, its vast portfolio of flavoring goodness, French's Frank's Red Hot, Cholula. And I know you'll appreciate this specifically. Have you seen that great meme of someone who crossed out the word curry on a bottle of McCormick curry powder and wrote LeBron? <laughs> I, I believe I have. <laughs> so yes. other than that, a striking thing about this company is how it positions itself increasingly almost like a tech company. So for instance, at a conference last week, Chief Operating Officer Brendan Foley went all Tim Cook on everyone, basically, highlighting specifically the company's focus on innovation. They now expect to produce six times more new product launches year over year than they did during the pandemic when product development kind of ran off the rails. So they're turning it back up. Turning it back up. He also highlighted the company's focus on design. They have updated packaging that preserves freshness with so-called nitrogen flushing procedure huh. and tighter sealing snap cap, not too shabby. And iteration two. So with increased home cooking continuing in this post-pandemic era with higher volume spice sales increasing 20% year over year, McCormick is now testing larger bottles. So larger bottles, potentially new products, more than we've seen the last couple of years at least. And it seems that one of the ways that McCormick is at least maybe testing out some of these potential new innovations is through artificial intelligence. Yes. So as Ben wrote in the newsletter, none of this tech mindset in this seasoning company should be surprising because this company was actually early to the AI party. Like early, like before we knew what ChatGPT was. It sounds Way like. before ChatGPT was a thing, yeah. or at least publicly a thing. Right, publicly a thing. Back in 2019, McCormick and IBM actually built a program called Sage, pun definitely intended. Yes. And it was an AI system trained on supposedly decades of flavor chemistry, sensory science, and consumer data to basically just generate new taste combinations. And Sage-assisted products have been in supermarkets since 2019. So pretty cool stuff. So we're already potentially eating some AI infused <laughs> spices or sauces. That's exactly what we're doing. Yeah. So McCormick, as you mentioned, really has this vibe of wanting to sound like they're from Silicon Valley, being a tech company. You know, every company does that. Everybody wants to be a tech company, or at least most of them did until, you know, Wall Street maybe lost some favor with them over the last couple of years. But <laughs> nevertheless, we often hear companies describe themselves as tech companies and, you know, they're backing it up a little bit. Are there any others in the food sector or at least competitors of McCormick that are also trying to kind of flaunt their tech skills? Yes. We spoke, I think, a few weeks ago about uh, interesting technology being developed by Heinz, yeah. for instance, another pantry giant, which has also been around for well over a century. They recently debuted something called the Heinz Remix, which if you've seen one of those fancy looking Coke vending machines with the big touch screen. Oh, yeah. And you can make all those different Coke combinations. It's Heinz's version of that. Oh, of the Coca-Cola freestyle. Yes, of the Coca-Cola freestyle machine. So it is a customizable sauce dispenser, basically, with a touch screen that allows you to create more than 200 potential sauce combinations. Uh, I'm a big condiment guy, and this is like a dream come true. Have you used one? I haven't used it. I'm not sure if it's even publicly available yet. Oh, that's right. They're still just testing this one yet for the actual sauce. Yeah. And I have a feeling it could be a little more complicated. Exactly. So I have a feeling it could be a little more complicated. I have a feeling there will be some upkeep and cleanliness issues. Yes. But I'm going to keep my hopes up. Now, what's cool about these products is as much as they might sound like it, they're really not meant to be 
you know, buzzy kind of PR campaign material. Mm -hmm. Coke's freestyle machine, for instance, can now be found in more than 50,000 locations like McDonald's and at AMC theaters, according to CNBC. And Kraft Heinz, for one, is working hard also to push its products outside the home and into places like airports, restaurants, even schools. So here's another way to do that. But more interestingly, like Coke, Heinz can use data from these machines and like McCormick, basically as market research for new sauce products that can bring to stores. And I think it's pretty smart. But as I said, I can see this machine specifically having some cleanliness issues, but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. And I will definitely try to use it. Okay. All right. One more question. What's your go-to sauce, Jacob? Oh, you know, this is not purchase advice. I have no connection with the brand, but I am a Sweet Baby Ray's fan through and through. Okay. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue Classic. sauce. Yeah. Classic. It's always good. Yeah. Okay, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. So if you're not subscribed, go get signed up at thehustle.co slash email. See you tomorrow. Hey, I want to tell you about another podcast brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. This one is called My First Million, hosted by Sam Parr and Sean Puri. My First Million features famous guests like Alex Hermosi, Sophia Amoruso, and Hassan Minaj sharing their secrets for how they made their first million and how to apply their learnings to capitalize on today's business trends and opportunities. So for example, in a recent episode, Sean discusses how his former intern, went from making $30,000 a year to 40000 in one minute by taking one big bet. And today, he's a 22-year-old millionaire, thanks to a couple early investments. Want to know more? You can listen to My First Million wherever you get your podcasts.